Hey, it's Matt here from Go Green Autos. So this is our own Hyundai Ionic Electric. It's a 2017 28 kilowatt hour model. And this car is now five years old and has covered 90,000 miles. So in this video, we're just going to have a look at the rear brakes there. A common issue on these is the rear brakes bind a little bit and cause a bit of a dragging effect. So just going to see if anything can be done to improve that. So I've got the car in the air now and the handbrake is off. But as you can see, they're really stiff and absolutely no free spinning on the wheels. Let's just show you the other one. But this is all completely normal. They all do that. Yeah, that one's really stiff. And that's primarily because they've got an electric handbrake and those electronic handbrakes do the brakes up really tight. So consequently, uh, well, as the brake pads wear, uh, the piston effectively adjusts all the time so they're always tight because they're getting maximum pressure on them when the handbrake goes on so there's absolutely no giving them so consequently they're always binding a little bit and you find on these cars when you're reversing you'll hear the back brake squeal um, and it's a common issue with modern cars because they have these electronic handbrakes so the brake pads get done up much tighter than you would if you had a conventional manual handbrake lever. So the result of that is the brakes are causing a dragging effect and it will use more energy and I've proved on uh, Renault Kangoo electrics because those have a, a similar issue where the rear brakes um, basically um, bind up because of lack of use because uh, on electric cars if you've got heavy regen you use your using very little braking and even less on the front because generally on vehicles when you brake the most of the braking is going to be on the front because that's where the weight shifts and on the Kangoos um, rusted corroded up rear brakes is a common issue uh, purely because of lack of use and on those I've proved that the vehicles do about a, uh, one mile per kilowatt hour better economy when the brakes aren't dragging on the back and it will be something very similar on these cars to be honest maybe not quite as much as that but these Hyundai Ionics are incredibly efficient cars anyway they do a good one to one and a half miles um, more per kilowatt hour than other electric cars do and these have very strong regen but they've also got a coasting option where you can turn the regen off completely and effectively they free wheel but if this resistance on the back brakes was much less they're going to freewheel better, so you're going to get better um, a driving economy. So what I'm going to do now is whip off the wheel and show you um, the rear brakes here. So here's your rear brakes, simple setup really, you've got an, a caliper here, obviously brake pads either side of your disc. This here is the electric handbrake, so you've got an electric motor here or an activator, and when you put on the handbrake that's applying the pressure to the brake pads electrically rather than hydraulically um, which would be through your foot brakes. So as I said the issue with electric handbrakes is they're really powerful so when it um, when the motor tightens up the pads it puts it on really tight which of course it's got to it's got to take the weight of the car but it's much tighter than it would be if it was a mechanical um, handbrake and cable setup like you have on conventional cars so consequently the pads are always done up as tight as they possibly can so there's not much uh, gap between the pads and the discs so they are all really tight and I'm trying to turn that disc now we'll turn the wheel hub here that handbrake is off but I can't turn that without the wheel so on. I'm just going to whip off the caliper here and I'll show you the brake pads so let me just get a torch on here and I'm just going to whip off the caliper here because you see there at the back of the brake pads there's two return springs and we're going to look at those. So to get the caliper off here you just need a 14 millimeter spanner and undo that bolt up there and that bolt there. So yeah with the two bolts out you can then pull the caliper off. It's a bit difficult doing this one-handed of course and rest that at the top so you don't want to leave it hanging putting any pressure on the hydraulic hose here or your electrical connections here to the handbrake. So I've rigged up a light now so I can show you what I'm looking at here. So let's just 
zoom in there. So there are these two spring clips that clip into the pads top and bottom and what these are doing is putting a little bit of force onto the pads pushing them away from the disc but you can see they don't really work that well because I still Nah, that's now jammed. I cannot turn that disc and we've got the the uh, caliper off obviously so there's no friction on these pads squeezing them in. Obviously this car has done 80,000 miles and is five years, well sorry 90,000 miles and is five years old now but yeah most cars don't have these clips but as you can see here um, they aren't really adding much of a benefit anyway and that's the sort of beef I've got with brakes on EVs they're using the conventional brakes that cars have always used the design hasn't changed and okay Hyundai have had it added this spring clip which is meant to free off the pads a little bit but with all vehicles pads are causing drags drag and uh, electric vehicles don't really use the brakes so consequently they seize up and rust causing extra drag and really I think brakes need a bit of a redesign on EVs particularly EVs with strong regen because you're doing the majority of your slowing down on the electric motor and not applying the brakes and if this gap between the brake pad and the disc was just increased by a fraction of a millimeter we're talking you know a quarter of a mil or something just to allow this disc to spin freely the cars would be an awful lot more efficient and also probably wouldn't uh, would minimize brake wear a little bit, uh, disc and pad wear. So yes, uh, servicing is quite important on an EV just to lubricate, clean up and lubricate your brakes, just to allow them to properly slide purely because of lack of use, because the dirt gets in here, they don't move and they end up seizing up. Um, however, main dealers don't generally do this. To be honest, most of the time they don't take the wheels off um, they will just inspect the pads and measure the thickness and um, will only start taking things apart if the pads need changing. But uh, with EVs you generally, or well, particularly with EVs with strong regen, you know the pads are going to last about 150,000 miles or so. But as we can see here before that they seize up just because of lack of use. So on a service it's important that the pads get removed, they all get wire brushed, cleaned up and then lubricated on the contact points with some silicon grease. Um, and it just allows them to move freely. So when they, are, uh, when they do get used they're actually going to move properly. And most importantly when you take your foot off the brakes the pads need to spring back just a fraction to allow the disc to move which isn't what's happening at the moment hence why we're getting a bit of squealing when we reverse and we're not getting that nice free reeling that uh, we really want. So on one of my previous videos I've done about the brakes on a Hyundai Ioniq someone commented that their Ioniq 28 kilowatt hour went into the dealership because he was complaining about squealing on the rear brakes when he was reversing and they supposedly fitted a modified pad return spring. So I got the part number off him because I had looked up and I couldn't see any details about a modified spring but I thought well that's great good news they've identified that these things don't really work and maybe they've made a beefier spring but after looking at the part number which this is it it's exactly the same springs I bought a packet of them here and all it was was the same springs but packaged in a packet of four rather than the other part number which is individual springs or maybe a pair I'm not sure the parts department weren't that clear on it but this was a new uh, part number just for a packet of four so it's just a repackaging job rather than a modified part so a little bit of a lie there saying it was a modified part but anyway what I'm going to do is take these springs off and compare them with the new ones and see whether these new ones have got more springy force there as it were compared to these old ones and you've got to remember these have done 90,000 miles so this is a job you can do yourself if you can uh, take a wheel off and properly support the car with axle stands and you can do this yourself you just need a little flatbed screwdriver and you just take the spring clips out. That one is very tight, so we'll do the bottom one. Yeah, that 
tight in the back as well. That's not wanting to come out particularly well. Yeah, this car is overdue a service. So yeah, there it is there. So let's have a look here. This is the original and this is the new one. So absolutely no difference. That isn't going to apply any more force than that one and they feel the same you know they do up to about there so yeah it feels absolutely the same so they're not a modified part at all um, but I'm going to fit these anyway as I've got it all apart but yeah it's not going to make a scrap of difference so um, I suspect what this other chap has found because he did say that it had cured his problem it's just a temporary fix because probably uh, when the dealership replaced the spring clips they removed the pads and cleaned them up and lubricated them and that actually does make a difference but it's a short-term fix because within I don't know in reality I think it's probably within a few weeks they return to exactly the same position as this it depends on the weather of course and depends how much mud and water and salt and everything else gets into these depends how dirty they get but I've Clean these up and lubricated them not too long ago. I know we're in winter now, so they are really muddy. But yeah, these have very quickly got, um, you know, rusted up and stuck. So whatever you do cleaning this up, it is quite a, sh uh, a temporary short-term fix. Um, and clearly these um, return springs aren't really adding much benefit Obviously it's better to have them than not have them, majority of cars don't have them, but yeah, they're not really strong enough to actually push these pads apart. So all you can do is frequently clean and lubricate the contact points on the end of the pads. So yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed really, because I, while these new ones uh, obviously looked exactly the same, because I have seen these things before, uh, I was hoping that when I took these off they would um, sort of be like that uh, and, and lost their sort of springiness um, particularly after so many miles but they haven't those old ones are no different to the new ones which is a shame but anyway if you do want to buy these um, and these are for all the ionic 28 kilowatt hour cars there's the part number and they are only about four pounds something like that I can't really remember but not much money at all, whereas if you to buy the individual ones, uh, they cost a lot more. So they did reduce the price for these repackaged ones and changed the part number. This part is different. That part is the same. I can't remember. I think this was 2800 without this QQH on the end, something like that. But anyway, that's the part number for a pack of four, which is enough to do your rear brakes on both sides. But for most people, probably not even worth doing because, you know, our car's done 90,000 miles and these aren't worn out or have lost their tension at all. So while I'm here, let's show you the thickness of these pads. Let's just measure the pads. So the inside pad is, can't read that, six millimeters. And the outside pad is five millimeters. Um, so looking at the gauge here, uh, I'm not sure the thickness of the pads are new. They're certainly not as thick as the front ones, which would be, um, which would be what are we, 12, that's 12 mil the thickest. So the front ones might be 12 to 13 to 14 mil, something like that. Rear pads tend to be th um, thinner. So the rear pads on this, I guess, would be eight to 10 mil. So yeah, these are about half worn and the car's done uh, 90,000 miles. So um, we're down, This these red ones are three millimeter and two millimeters. So yeah, we've got a long way to go before you would bother changing the pads. So I'm gonna um, clean this up. So I'll take the pads out here, wire brush them and um, clean up the, I don't know what you call these things, uh, the tin, I'm going to call them sliders, um, shields, I don't know, I don't know what they're called, but anyway, um, clean them up and lubricate them, the U-shape here where the 
lug of the brake pad slides because obviously that brake pad has got to slide like that. So lubricate all the contact points with the proper brake grease and uh, the sliding caliper pins are all good but I'll probably pop them out and re-grease them. And then when you come to put the caliper back on, um, because I'm not changing the pads and not therefore increasing the thickness here, I probably won't need to wind the piston back in here. Um, normally I'd connect the scanner up to the uh, car and to use the ECU to fully wind in the motor, but uh, you don't have to. You can, if you've got a brake winding tool, you can just wind it in here, which I'll probably will. I'll probably just wind that in one turn just so that isn't really tight and uh, put it back together. So that's all you can do on these is just regular cleaning just so they don't get stiff. Uh, and obviously I'll put those spring clips back on. So yeah, that's how you service the rear brakes on an Ionic. Uh, I was really hoping these spring clips uh, were going to be different on the new ones, but um, clearly not. So uh, I was led to believe there was a modified part, but yeah, clearly they aren't modified exactly the same and aren't gonna make a scrap of difference. So, um, so yeah, when it comes to uh, improving the rear brakes, all you can do is regularly clean them. Anyway, that'll do for this video. I'm not gonna film doing the rest of it. Um, you know, if you don't know how to do this, then I would suggest maybe you shouldn't be messing around with your brakes and get a garage to do it. But anyway, I have explained what you've got to do. Um, it is very simple. So if you are mechanically minded, then yeah, you can service your own vehicle. Um, obviously don't get any grease on the brake pad material or your brake disc. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's it for this video. A bit of a, uh, a non-event really. I was hoping that these spring clips were going to be different and it was going to improve the freeing off of those pads and it would be something then I would then recommend all Ionic drivers to uh, go and do or book it in and get the garage to do. But clearly, obviously there isn't a modified part and uh, what some Hyundai dealers are telling um, their customers all they're really doing is just lubricating and doing a normal brake service um, so anyway if you have found this video video useful please do click that thumbs up button on youtube that really does help other people find the channel and i will see you on the next video oh and one other thing i would just add if you want to see more videos on the ionic electric then go on to the channel and use the search function and put ionic in and there's plenty of other videos on these vehicles on the channel already. That's what we want, a bit of free wheeling, but of course the piston is pushed in and the pads aren't touching the disc there because the brakes haven't been applied yet. But when you look at the front ones, they do free wheel. I haven't touched these yet. And that is still spinning the um, drive shafts there into the um, reduction gearbox. So there's a lot more friction at the front but interestingly, no friction at all on the pads.